This is Walter Cronkite reporting. Last week, we visited an economic whirlwind, Houston, Texas, Boomtown, USA. Today, we visit another part of America where bewilderment and despair gnaw unchecked at the foundations of an essentially optimistic society. Optimism, faith in the future, carried the ancestors of these people of the southern mountains away from poverty, across an ocean, protected them in the dark and bloody wilderness, built the affluent America we know today. Yet, these are Americans today, this week, now. This is our story, Depressed Area, USA, as the Prudential Insurance Company of America presents the 20th century. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end. Of a stone, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver sound of a love. Walk on. tight folds of the East Kentucky mountains, dead machines are strewn on the misty hills. Bought for fifty, a hundred dollars, old cars get people thirty miles to their job when there is work, twenty miles to the unemployment insurance office if there isn't. Here machines die by the thousands and lie like beer cans where they fall. The people endure. These Americans do not always care to be seen, but you can hear their voices. Can't get no work nowhere around here. I went these places. I just said they didn't have nothing to do. I have made around six to two dollars a week in the mines, but it's been a long time. My daddy's dead. He got killed in the mines. I don't feel free to take people's money for nothing. I like to do something to earn the money. I work about six months here in the coal mine. I don't do anything. I'd be glad to land work. Southern Appalachia, the mountainous backyard of nine states, eight million people, is a depressed area the largest, most persistent in America. Clay County, Eastern Kentucky, is not the worst county in Appalachia, nor the best. It is here we will tell our story. Manchester is one of about 200 county seats in the Appalachians where friend and neighbor try to govern themselves, seek help, 
and become statistics. Manchester, 1,900 population. Clay County, 20,000 and falling. Unemployment, almost three times the national rate. Income, half of all families receive less than $1,800 a year. For the nation, the comparable median is $6,000. 73% of all Clay County families receive less than $3,000 the figure below which poverty officially begins. That is why in Southern Appalachia, USA, the Save the Children Federation distributes the cast-off clothing of other Americans, as if this were some rural country in the Balkans after one more war. The very young, their mothers, the aged, are the most numerous inhabitants of this permanent culture of poverty. The author of Night Comes to the Cumberlands tells what has happened in eastern Kentucky, Harry Caudill. But here is a point about eastern Kentucky that I would like to make for the benefit of the entire nation. And that is that eastern Kentucky is a case uh, study in the effects upon people and upon land of automation and mechanization. Now those are processes that are continuing apace and of course they're hitting the entire nation. They ran ahead of the rest of the nation and automation and mechanization hit East Kentucky first. It suddenly idled thousands upon thousands of once very important and valuable coal miners. The Tennessee Valley Authority has become the nation's biggest single user of coal and uh, the authority buys this coal in the open market at the lowest possible price. Deep subterranean mines can't provide the coal at a price that uh, TVA is willing to pay. And uh, strip mining and auger mining, uh, of course, uh, that there uh, are forms of surface mining. That means that the surface of the earth, the trees, stone, dirt, everything, is uh, dug up by bulldozers and uh, shovels, power shovels, and uh, the entire covering overlying the coal is hurled down the mountainsides. The mountains, in effect, are wrecked to uh, gouge out and dig out the coal on the inside. Appalachia is an American colony. Its natural wealth is exported east and midwest for steel into the booming TVA south for cheap electric power. In Clay County, automation and strip mining have brought heavy unemployment. Some non-union deep mines still operate. The wages are from $50 to $60 for a dangerous week. The failure of the family farm is as much a part of the story as coal. The mountaineer, miner or not, always had homely arts, such as making sorghum syrup to fall back on. But his hillside farming has exhausted the land. Today, the census usually lists him not as self-reliant farmer, but simply as rural non-farm. If young, he must change his life. If old and lucky, he and his wife can raise a few chickens, have a garden, and sit on the porch knowing only too well that sweet yesterday can never come back to the lovely hills. In Berea, Kentucky, Pearly F. Ayer of the Council for the Southern Mountains sums up the region's plight. It's more people than we need to do what people have always done for a living. And it's less education or formal schooling than we need or could use to be functionally uh, effective in this day and age. And it's a, a lack of any concerted notion of where to go from here. Manchester and Clay County receive more than $107,000 a month in state and federal welfare payments. And Appalachia as a whole, about $550 million a year. Welfare does not include unemployment insurance or Social Security. Here is one way the money is spent. My name is Bessie Smith. I operate the shoe shoe store. The ladies' shoes, including the tags, will run you $2 if they're, you know, in good shape. But we've got some sell for a dollar, some for 50 cents, you know, just according to the condition of the shoe. This is Commodities Day in Barberville, Kentucky. If a man can prove he earns less than $100 a month, he can get free food from the huge surpluses built up by the Federal Farm Subsidy Program for more productive farming areas. The list of foods is similar to that in a care package sent overseas. One peanut, one meat, 
no cheese, and one butter. Two rice, three beans, three meal, two wheat, one peanut, five meat, one cheese. Some call this a giveaway, but perhaps they do not know what a giveaway costs the man who gets it. David Hubbard. Come on, this. I had a brother not be seen there at the bill. Now, that's my feelings. I don't feel that I should say anything against it, but I can't keep from feeling that I need to be working, making more, and going on my own under my own effort. Well, we get the commodities, of course, and then we grow our own vegetables, our own vegetable garden. And if it wasn't for that, why, really, I wouldn't know what would happen. We used some of the other day, our beans and rice and fried potatoes and chopped meat and cornbread and biscuits. We couldn't get by, but it would make it a little harder for us. Yeah, I've told my wife many times, if I didn't get started in, in something to look at the future, to look to in the future, that we would be in the same condition 10 years from the day as we are now. Hubbard, a mechanic, makes $20 a week, is trying to develop an apple tree nursery. The kerosene lamps are much cheaper, and I don't like bills to meet each month that I may not have the money to pay. The high birth rate goes down, but mountain people still like large families. This woman is 33. Chester's my oldest one, and um, Raleigh's raised my next one, and Isabel next, and Sam next, and Caleb, and uh, Sam, and Roberta, and Nancy. Appalachian towns usually have poor public services and their own brand of politics. If a city council votes a small tax for street repairs, a rash of indignant lawsuits prevents collection. In a county, the nominal center of power is the courthouse, but real power is often in the school superintendent's office. With private industry depressed, the school system becomes the largest payroll in the county, the superintendent the most important employer. Eventually, a superintendent can, for good or ill, become almost sole proprietor of his fellow citizen's principal industry, public education. Appalachia's water supply and sewage disposal are often worse than primitive, even when families have wells, as this one does not. Improvements are discussed by the more sophisticated and better off townspeople, but discussion often breaks down to resentful suggestions that all those people on welfare ought to be put to work improving the region. Welfare administered by the state with federal supervision actually consists of aid to dependent children, to the totally and permanently disabled, to the blind, and to the aged. About 14% of Clay County receives welfare. There are accusations, sometimes well-founded, that men leave home temporarily so families can get aid, that doctors give false certificates of disability, that mountaineers are losing their old self-reliance because of commodities and welfare. As one boy from a mountain family, now in college, said, when your folks see their kids hungry, what are they going to do? What about welfare? Well, I never draw the welfare. Why? I never have got on it. Is that because they won't take you on no, it? No, I never have tried to get on it. I've been trying to get by that as long as I could. So you, you'd prefer to try to make a living for yourself? Yeah. Just trying to get by myself as long as I could. You think you can continue? No, I don't think I can. I think it went about as good as I can go. This is Manchester's mayor, Ernest Rice. We asked him his opinion of claims that people in Clay County would rather live on welfare than work. I think that's entirely wrong. I believe that uh, if people had a job to do, that they were sure that they could feed their family and have the things that other Americans have, that they wouldn't have anything to do with welfare or the commodity lines or whatever you want to call it. They just wouldn't go about that thing. I remember when that started. And uh, when that first opened, 
people there who did finally have to go to it went at night. They wouldn't go in the daytime when people could see them. And if it was, if they had jobs and an opportunity to work like other people have today, I believe 99% of them would never go by the commodity line, or 99% of them would never be on welfare. They'd work. They're good people and they're intelligent people. All they need is an opportunity to do something. Those most able to work, the young and able-bodied, leave the Appalachians. This youth has found a job in Lexington, 90 miles away. He hopes the old family car will get him there and back on weekends. Clay County's population, even with a high birth rate, is falling, mostly because of out-migration. Pearly Air. There are those who preach uh, out-migration. And a friend of mine who says, uh, problem probably is to get these folks out of this area. And I say, well, oh, say, uh, so they leave. And, and then are not needed in Detroit and Chicago and Cincinnati and Columbus. He said, that's not our problem. Well, it is our problem because they go there and be either become uh, worse off there and then come back again and participate in what we call shuttle migration, just in the search of this or in search of that. It is true that if a man hasn't any employment and he hears about a kin relative of his up in Columbus who has a job, he takes off and goes up there and plans to send for his folks if he gets work. Uh, and they, they come and go like this. This does fragment families some. But there is some virtue, it seems to me, in a man's uh, uprooting himself and looking for something better. On the other hand, we, we, endorse it. we endorse this with considerable doubt in our minds because uh, if we encourage men to migrate into a situation where they're not needed or into a situation for which they're not prepared, we've rendered them no service. Appalachia has deep attachments to its hills and to the family. Yet parents are telling their children to go, get into the 20th century. Mrs. Ida Bowling. I said, boys, I just don't think I can live and see in schools of the minds today. I said, I'm a mother and I'm speaking as a mother. Boys, don't go. They said, Mother, what will we do? I said, leave this country. Go get your jobs where you can take care of your family and, and uh, try to live for yourself. Don't mind me and Dad. We'll get by. Go on. And then they all left and they went and found work and good jobs and has nice families. The 20th century will continue after this message from your host, the Prudential Insurance Company of America. We now continue with the 20th century depressed area, USA. At Berea College, Kentucky, 90% of the students are from Appalachia. The original idea of Berea, when founded in 1855, was to provide young leaders for the region. But these students, who earn part of their education working in student industries, know about the opportunities in the affluent society. Fewer and fewer want to go back to the mountains. Pearly Air, who teaches at Berea. I tell my students simply this. They have two choices. One is to decide what needs to be done and where it needs to be done and prepare themselves to do as much of it as they can. Or to decide what's to be had and how much of it can they get. Now, these are just two choices. I tell them if they leave the mountains, they ought to go to bed every night of their lives knowing that they left it just as it is. I just don't think I'll go back. There's nothing there really that I really want. There's, I want more than just to exist. I want to do things and see places. If every one of us did what we could, I think it'd help more than anything else. Where I'd like to go back and help the people all I could or, or be of service to the community in any way I could but I can't go back and live on nothing. I plan to go back to the mountain, and I really think there's something there that I can do. I went to a one-room school, which had eight grades in it, and I stayed it here until I finished grade school. There were so many grades in the room, they just had what they called a recitation bench, and uh, the students each took turns the different classes went up and said their lesson, if it was reading or whatever it was. And then the next grade up until they finished all the eighth grades and then they started over with a different subject. That was a Clay County girl in the difficult public health nursing course at Berea. 
This school is similar to the one she attended. After high school, she found her diploma would not get her into college without another year of high school at Berea. This is common. Clay County, where less than 20% of adults over 25 have completed eighth grade, spends less than $190 per year per pupil, more than $200 below the national average. It has many one and two room schools where several grades kill time while another recites. Local taxes pay less than 10% of school costs. Dry statistics, but they tell how the infection of poverty is passed from one generation to the next. Every time they page trace, they trace, they nothing at all. Like all the other page trace, it just stood there all rest up in its new spring box. When children reach the Clay County High School in Manchester, they are still reading aloud in class. Uh, Peter Ray, would you like to read that in front of you? Very few helpful spelling rules can apply to Once you have memorized some of the more useful spelling rules, you can figure out what to expect. Most spelling, to be sure, is learned by memorizing. Yet many people find rules help. The rules given below are the kind that will be of most help. All right, these are rules, please. Right. I.e., when the sound is E, -E except for C. All right, look at your word there. What's the first word for the example that he gives us? Mm. What's the last one? Mm. Pearly air. It's not a, a judgment on their ingenuity or on their developability, but it is true that out of 257 counties, in this area, there are only two in which the median adult educational achievement level is above the national median. Only two. It's been said for years that anyone with fewer than five years of public schools, this is quite aside from the quality of the school itself, but fewer than five years in the public school is a functional illiterate and regresses rather than progresses. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is now being said that in this day and age, uh, and I mean, in this day and the future, anybody, anyone with less than eight years of, uh, of public schooling is, is, for all practical purposes, a non-functioning citizen at, at full capacity. Uh, I wouldn't even say full capacity, at acceptable capacity. So uh, you can call functional Ill illiteracy uh, that amount of educational preparation uh, beneath which a person is not prepared to get a job or to function as a citizen or as a parent in, in society and in, a, in, a, in one world that we have today. Clay County, in spite of its burdens, is trying to pull itself up. Two new consolidated schools now replace some of the one and two room schoolhouses through the help of a new state sales tax. In Manchester, there is a new health center built with pennies, nickels, dimes and dollars raised by the people and matched by state and federal funds. It was something they really wanted. They formed a health district and voted a small tax to support the center. Diet deficiencies, intestinal parasites are combated here. But the center and the two church medical missions in the county still do not reach all those who, because they cannot read, or because they fear they will have to pay, or because they are too proud, may never learn that the cough they have is tuberculosis or the rash their child had with scarlet fever. Now the baby doesn't need it. No, he's good. all caught up. Boys, that'll have you for a couple years now. Ready to go to school. A dam and a small lake will be created in Beech Creek Holler, sponsored by some Manchester merchants and younger leaders. Isham Hensley. Well, two or three years ago, was eight or ten fellows got together and decided we needed to do something for Manchester in Clay County. And we decided we needed some water, and good pure water first, before we could enter any industry or anything like that. So we went to the governor, and he told us if we'd get the land, he'd help us get the lake. So the people in Clay County and Manchester raised the money to buy the land, and the state and the federal government is putting up the money to build the dam with it. 
Mayor Rice. If a factory came into this area, I think they'd find the best working conditions, the best people to work with that they've ever encountered. These people are used to work, they like to work, and they want to work. And they're intelligent, they're easy to learn, they can teach them and teach them quick. What is the federal program? Stanley Levy talks with Under Secretary of Commerce Franklin D. Roosevelt, Jr. Our uh, program is contained in our report to the President for the Appalachian region is, number one, a highway uh, development and improvement program to improve the communications and the accessibility of the area. People and goods can move in and out. Number two, it's a water resources program, flood control, pure water, uh, sewage and waste disposal. Number three, it's a timber development program. Number four, it's an agricultural pasture improvement program on which can be built a cattle producing industry. And number five, the most important part of the program is the human resources development in the Appalachian area. Better schools, upgrading of the skills of the working man and woman, and better health conditions. Now we can uh, help those people to uh, uh, join the mainstream socially, politically, economically of the nation as a whole and in raising uh, their standards we will raise the standards of the nation. Meanwhile, eight million mountain people of southern Appalachia are, like their cast-off cars, casualties of a collision with the 20th century. In cities, colleges, and distant cabarets, outlanders and strangers sing old Appalachian folk songs. Down here, where the songs come from, there's not much singing. There just isn't too much left to sing about. The story of next week's episode in a moment. And now a message from your host, the Prudential Insurance Company of America. This is Walter Cronkite reporting from the Ballhaus Plots in Vienna, Austria. Next week at this time, the Prudential will present The Agony of Austria, the story of Adolf Hitler's first foreign conquest, the Austrian Anschluss of 1938, which opened the gates through which the world would totter toward a total war. Next week, The Agony of Austria. This is Walter Cronkite reporting for the 20th Century.